Jay Hagedich, and welcome. Thank you very much for tuning back in. I'm Jay Hodges. I'm a proud friend of Sinn Féin's. I want to welcome you to today's conversation. Uh, we're going to have a great time talking with Jim Gibney. Uh, and before we go any further, I just want to make that introduction. Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Jay. Doing well. Good. Yep. Good. Keeping All it good. Keeping, you keeping good things in the quarantine in Belfast? Yes. Just keeping one step ahead of the um, virus. Um, I've been vaccinated uh, about two months ago, and I'm now expecting my second vaccination on Monday. So I'm feeling uh, good. I'm feeling good. Good. Good for you. Good way to take care of that. Now, before we start talking about um, the 1981 election and, and whatnot, and I really, I'm excited to get into that as a, as a campaign guy. Sure. Um, but I want to actually talk about you just for a, a brief couple of minutes, because I don't know that very many people will know who you are and your background. Um, can you talk just for a quick minute about, uh, you know, where you're from and, and, you know, did you grow up in a, a Republican family? Like, is it, you know, what kind of brought you to the cause? Yeah. Okay. Well, look, um, um, so I was born in Rathcool uh, in the mid fifties. And as it turns out, um, uh, we're, we're going to talk about Bobby Sands in a moment. Um, and Bobby was also born in Rathcool. Um, and we, we went to the same primary school, Stella Maris Primary School, but we didn't know each other at school, uh, or indeed for, for most of our most of the next 20 odd, 20 odd, 30 years. Um, but I'm from I, I'm from and we, my family moved down to the short strand in, the, in East Belfast in the mid 60s, early 60s. And uh, I don't come from um, a Republican family. And I think that was the big difference uh, in the 60s. Um, when, when, when the conflict broke, broke out again in, in 68, 69, the distinctive difference was that um, the, the, the Republican families who kept the struggle alight, if you like, are alive from, from partition to, to the civil rights movement in 64. Um, they were joined by tens of thousands of other families. And one of those families was, was my family uh, involved in, in the Republican struggle. And it was the it was the people who were affected by the injustices that they saw in the 60s, that the civil rights movement reminded them of, um, that made the distinctive difference over the over the 25 year period between 1969 and 1994, when the IRA called their ceasefire. So I fit into that milieu um, of, of, of post 69 Republicans, and they were the people that made the difference. Now, uh... What is your role in, let's say, the late 1970s? Because, uh, like, what are you doing for um, for the cause at that time? Uh, in, let's say, late 76, 78, uh, in that general area. Well, I'd been in and out of prison for a, on on a few occasions by the late 70s, um, and I suppose the struggle was very much um, a struggle on the streets at, at that time whether you were in the IRA or whether you were a, a, a supporter of Sinn Féin or whether you were involved in, in, in any of the protest movements around um, the struggle for independence. Uh, essentially, the struggle had two dimensions to it then. It was the armed struggle and a, and a kind of movement on the streets, mass struggle, protest movement on the streets. So I was part of that protest movement on the streets in, in, in the late 70s. Um, and uh, 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 those protest movements in those years centered around conditions in the prisons or political prisoners, whether it was against internment without trial that came in in 1971 and lasted for five years, or whether it was to do with um, the arrest of people on the streets or the arrest of people and taken off the prison. And I suppose it's really uh, in, in, in the period from 76 to 81, whenever there's a huge protest movement built around the whole demand for political status for political prisoners. And I was in that. And I would have been one of the main activists in that, an organization called the Relatives Action Committee. I would have been on its executive. The National Hates Block RMR Committee, uh, which came along afterwards, I would have been on its national executive. So a lot of my time was spent around protest movements in the late 70s. Now, uh, it, it, there is a hunger strike in 80. Uh, there is an additional hunger strike in 81. Um, and I want you to kind of pick up um, when uh, when the election rolls around. Um, I, I, I just I kind of want to jump right into 
like the where did the idea come and and kind of how did the 8100 strike and then the passing uh, of Frank kind of lead into an election and those things can you set that stage for us yeah well I think it's important to bear in mind that the prison protest before the hunger first hunger strike in 1980 had lasted for five years so there's a hunger there's 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 a, the first hunger strike uh, begins and um I think October 1980 and 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 lasts until December uh, 1980 and it ends um um and it ends in circumstances where the British government uh, made certain concessions to the prisoners and then didn't follow through on them. And there's a second hunger strike then begins on the, on the 1st of March. And it was led by Bobby Sands, who was the OC, the officer commanding the prisoners uh, at the time. And within a very short time um, of Bobby beginning his hunger strike, I think it was maybe March 5th, the MP for Fermanagh South Tyrone, Frank McGuire, himself a former political prisoner who was imprisoned in the 50s and a Republican um, activist. Um, he was MP for, for, for Manor South Tyrone. He died suddenly and unexpectedly. And when I heard the news of, of his passing, obviously um, at the time, um, I was thinking about the you know, just the suddenness of it for his family and his, for, 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 the, for his constituents. But I, I'd met Frank on a few occasions and he was a great supporter of the prisoners, um, wholeheartedly supported their demand for political status because he knew himself as a former political prisoner what political status was about in terms of recognition and conditions, two very important ingredients. And so it's hard to remember now whether I heard the news in the early hours of the morning or I heard the news around nine o'clock, eight o'clock when I just got up. But as soon as I heard the news and, and I kind of started to think about what could happen, what, what, was there an opportunity in, 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 in Frank's death um, to do something about the prisoners? And so it just struck me that if there was a by-election to be held in Bobby's lifetime, because... Bobby was just a few days uh, on the um, start of the hunger strike. And uh, there was no sign of a by-election, no talk of a by-election. But then it was early days because Frank himself had just literally died. So I contacted Jerry Adams within a few hours of getting up that morning. That was the morning after I'd, I'd heard the news. And uh, I suggested to him, I said, look, Jerry, I think this... If there is a by-election uh, during, during Bobby Sands' uh, uh, hunger strike, I think we should stand Bobby as a candidate. And Jerry being Jerry is cautious, and uh, obviously he needed to think about this, uh, and need, we needed to talk about this to other people. And one of the crucial people that needed to be spoken to about this was Bernda McAlliskey. Because Bernadette was a great, Bernadette Devlin, Bernadette Devlin McCulliskey, or McCulliskey, maybe you might know her better yeah. as. So Bernadette was a, a, a big supporter of the, uh, of, of the political prisoners, former MP, uh, a leading figure in the civil rights movement and the people's democracy movement and the movement um, on the streets from, from the mid sixties. And so it was very important to, to, to talk to Bernadette um, about the idea of, of standing uh, Bobby in, in the election uh, and, and any by election that was to be held. And so Jerry asked me then to contact Bernadette um, and asked her to come in uh, to Belfast and, and have a, a chat about this idea. So I spoke to Bernadette and she agreed that she would come in the following day. And so she was a very important um, person in this whole discussion um, because she was very popular, immensely popular uh, uh, in, in, in those days. And it was a, a absolutely crucial to any election campaign to have Bernadette on side and supportive. Um, and so we, we, we spoke, Jerry and, 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 and I spoke to Bernadette about it and she was 100% supportive immediately. Of, of the of the decision, and I, I recall at the, at the time she said she would work the, sh the shirt of her back for to get Bobby Sands elected, and she did, and she did. But that was the first 
phase of, of, of the idea taking root. We, we then had to go into Fermanagh South Tyrone to speak to local Republicans in the area. And they were less enthusiastic about it than I was. I was very enthusiastic about it and myself. They were less enthusiastic about it. And I could understand it at the time because they were very fearful uh, that if um, that sure. if Bobby if Bobby didn't get elected and died on on, on hunger strike um, that it, it would be used that the people of Fermanagh South Throne had rejected Bobby Sands and you know therefore for the people of that area that was that was something that they did not want the risk that they did not want the risk but the situation was such that big risks needed to be taken. Big risks needed to be taken because the, the, Bobby was in hunger strike. Others were set to follow. Um, the British government's line was that the prisoners weren't, didn't have popular support. So we said, okay, let's test out that argument. The prisoners don't have popular support. And so we got, we, we convinced the local Republicans of the merits of, 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 um, of standing. And then Bobby had to be, had to be, uh, we had to talk to Bobby as well and uh I, I i had to go in to see bobby sands when he was i can't remember he may have been a week or two on, on hunger strike at the time uh, and i remember speaking to him about it uh, and 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 making the case to him that this was a very important uh you know uh, initiative um it was going to lift the profile of the hunger strike and he listened carefully to all of that and he was very clear in his head, and he said to him, I remember him saying to me, Jim, you know, I'm delighted about standing. You know, I think it's a great idea, but it isn't going to, it isn't going to mean anything in relation to me um, because um, I'm, I'm dying whether I get elected or don't get elected. It's as simple as that. And his mind was very fixed on that. He was quite clear on that. And he was clear throughout the, the, the time um, that he was on hunger strike and beforehand. Um, so that was, we'd, we'd, done, we'd done all the necessary um, preparatory work, if you like. And, and we just then had to wait on, on the by-election being called. So you, you build the coalition, the, the community coalition on the outside, South Tyrone, uh, Bernadette, you, you've got backing um, and you're starting to move forward from Republicans. You go in and, and you you talk to Bobby. Um, he agrees. And I think that the uh, it is an amazing uh, statement of his character to uh, to agree to do it, but also to make a comment on, you know, on, on his own beliefs. I just think that's yeah, uh, he's an incredible character. Uh, that's just a, a, a beautiful thing. How does the campaign then start to move forward when they call the by-election and everything starts going like what is it that you're looking at doing and how are you building community support and how are you kind of driving and, and turning out because you're not you're not from that area yes you've got to kind of go in and, and you've got your coalition but now you've got to get everybody moving and everybody uh well it was a what, 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 what the first thing that was very important to do was to get the broadest possible support for bobby's nomination papers so we managed to get people from the community who would be well known in the community to publicly back Bobby by signing his nomination papers. And um, there was there was there were people who were leaders of the local Irish Independence Party, uh, a local councillor from the SDLP, um, who I think his name was Tommy Murray. He signed the nomination papers, and then there were other um, well known figures in the area. Who, who, who had great standing in the community. And they came out in, in support of, of, of Bobby. And so it was, it, it was very clear from the outset um, that Bobby, Bobby's candidature and, and the campaign theme really was um, also tapped into the sentiment that there was there for, 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 and support for Bobby. And that campaign theme was basically uh, about Vote Bobby Sands to save his life. So that was the theme that we that we that we ran under, um, and the, 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 then we carried out what can only be described as a, a classical 
election campaign with 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 canvas plans and door knocking and 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 barnstorming the entire constituency. And we brought Republicans in from all over Ireland. I mean, they came in in their hundreds, in their hundreds. And from Manus South Throne is a as, as a huge rural constituency um, of thousands of people's homes. And we, we 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 there were two individuals who had there was lots of individuals on the ground who had experience, electoral experience, but the two that we relied on, if you like, at the central level of the campaign was Francie Malloy, who's a, who's a member of Sinn Féin, who was a member of Sinn Féin then, still is a member of Sinn Féin. He's an MP for the area. And 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 also that um, Bernadette, Mac, Bernadette, Mac, Macaliske, or Bernadette Macaliske, um because Bernadette also had the experience because she was an MP at one stage in the area as well. And uh, so these were the these were the experts uh, in terms of driving the campaign of knowing how to fight elections and the deadlines and all of that that, that was required. So with the, there was a there was a great team spirit, um, and then there was a high degree of motivation, high degree of motivation, um, because basically this was serious stuff. You know, Bobby was down on hunger strike. Um, during, during the campaign, the election campaign, he was joined by four other political prisoners who were also uh, on hunger strike and down. So there was this huge, huge, frantic and frenetic um, campaign to save Bobby's life. Now, I uh, last March, I was in uh, North Bay, Dublin for the election, and I have seen the the uh, ground campaign that can be put on, and it is in a very impressive, a uh, very impressive thing. You're in a head-to-head, -head, uh, meaning you've got a, a candidate. There's only two candidates that are up, and they're, yeah. they're running in this election. Um, what are you thinking, kind of going into the final days? Like, did you, did you uh, have a sense that things were going really? Was there anything that kind of shocked you? Like, did you, did you? Um, were well, you yeah, first of all, you have to. What you have to remember about me: this is the first election I've fought. Um, I have no experience. I've never voted in an election in my life. I think Jerry Adams may have been involved in elections, Sinn Féin elections in the mid 60s, but I certainly wasn't and I certainly hadn't. So I was part of a team of people who knew how to, to, how to run elections and how to fight elections. And essentially what, uh, what we were doing was we were canvassing. We were knocking every door. We were up, down, up and down lanes morning, noon and night. We were on the canvas trail morning, noon and night. We were out canvassing and cavalcades. I mean, I mean, there was one, one, one time we were, we, 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 had, we had hired this bus from a local um, businessman and, and, and it was a single decker pink bus, cerise pink bus. And we were going around, um, we were going around from Manus South Throne in this pink bus. And there was a few journalists on it one of whom was from the Daily Telegraph in London. And he wrote an article about this, uh, uh, and he, he, nick, nick, uh, he dubbed it the Pink Panther. Sinn Féin's Pink, or, no, not Sinn Féin's, but the, 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 the Pink Panther campaign bus. And we were on that. And we toured around the area and we had 30, 30 or 40 people dressed in, and, and with Bobby Sands t-shirts and vote Bobby Sands t-shirts. And everywhere we went, it just turned heads because it was such a gaudy color, you know, race <laughs> pink. So, you know, there was, um, but it was the most, you know, frenetic campaign that I've ever been involved in, in terms of elections, because the, click, the, the clock was ticking on Bobby's life. Now, uh, Bobby wins, and there's a, a great, um, there's a great photograph uh, of Danny Morrison standing behind the election judge official, and, Screaming. Bobby Sands has been duly elected to serve as a member for the third constituency. What 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 did you do? What you've never run a campaign, and this is arguably uh, one of the single most important campaigns in my lifetime anywhere in the world. Uh, and you have yeah. you have just pulled this thing off. Like, where are you, and what are you doing? Well, I think we were all somewhere in the stratosphere, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of the result. Because we were outside the college, where the the count was taking place, um, and um, 
there was only a certain number of people who were allowed in uh, to the college at the time for the count. I was there for a short period of time. And what I was doing, what one of the other jobs I was doing was um, uh, I, I was visiting, I was visiting the prisoners who were on hunger strike and, and who, who, who at the time. And as it so happened, on the day of, of, of the count, that afternoon, I had to be in the prison visiting Francis Cues, who was who can, who was the number two on, on the hunger strike. So I missed the declaration because I was in the prison. Uh, visiting Francis, and I heard the declaration, the victory declaration on, on the news, and I mean, the, the, the elation that was that, that I was feeling, and the emotion uh, as well, it was an emotional moment, um, an incredible emotional moment, because, you know, there was this vilification campaign against Bobby, yeah. and uh, throughout, throughout it, and people were being blackmailed emotionally on television and on radio. The anti, the pro-unionist, the anti um, uh, Bobby Sands campaign, and the the, the community of Fermanagh South Tyrone were were besieged, were besieged by by um, a, a, a blackmail propaganda and um, you know denigrating Bobby and everything that he stood for. But the people absorbed all of that. And they listened to the campaigners. They listened to people who were knocking their doors and who were saying to them, look, vote for Bobby Sands. If you vote for Bobby Sands, you could save his life. You know? And uh, so that message, I think, got through to people and they ignored all the other um, messages that, uh, that, that, that were encouraging people not to vote for Bobby. And they, they were very focused and very clear and they come out in their thousands uh, to vote for him. And I was going around on the day of the election. I was going around from Anna South Tyrone with Bobby's mother and his sister Marcella. And I have a, a very clear memory of, of when we were visiting the schools where the 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 the, the, the um, where, where 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 the elections um, people were going to vote in the polling stations and. And there was a genuine warmth towards um, Bobby's mother and his sister. And people would have recognized him from the media. Um, and you could see that people were connected to them um, as they were going to vote, you know. But of course, you couldn't allow what you were looking at um, into your head in case the, vote, the, the, the result was, was different. To, to, to the one that came out on, on, on the day. But there's no doubt the, the people of Fermanagh South Rome took Bobby's mother and, 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 and Marcel and Bobby Sands himself, who remember was in a prisoner in, in a prison cell that they hadn't seen. I mean, they, they knew, they, 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 and they, they no, 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 the only image they had of him was, an, was a black and white photograph on, on a poster, on a lamppost, calling for people to, to vote for Bobby. So there was this huge leap of faith on their behalf um, in support of Bobby Sands. And it was an incredible, uh, I think, act of generosity by the people of Fermanagh South Throne to vote for Bobby because they believed in voting for Bobby. They could save his life. Now, uh, I, I got so many questions. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to organize some thought here. I always, whenever I work campaigns, you know, the campaign ends in the States, usually it gets called the night. And then you, I always tell staff, like, you know, you've got until seven o'clock tomorrow morning and then the work begins. So, you know, you've got, you've got between whatever time the race gets called, say 11 o'clock and 7 a.m. to celebrate and enjoy. And then at 7 a.m. tomorrow, like, you know, you, you've got to be cock lock ready to rock in the office. Like, let's get going here. And we got, we just got to let them do a job. Um, and so I'm curious as to what, what happens after the campaign ends uh, for you guys? Like what, you know, what kind of is the, the days afterwards, you know, what's the direction that you guys start going? Because um, I kind of want to get from that into, you know, leading into future elections and future campaigns. Uh, I think it's a catalyst, but what's the, what's the time period? Well, right you after? see, the key, the key issue for, for, for us was saving Bob, Bobby's life and the hope that if you save Bobby's life, on the basis that the British government listened to the will of the people on that occasion, which was a vote for Bobby 
to save his life. But it was also a vote for political status because the campaign was being fought around prison conditions and, and the, refusal, the refusal of the British government to grant political status to the prisoners. So the expectation, immediately expectation, and that was the case for some days, was that Margaret Thatcher, Britain's Prime Minister, could not ignore, could not ignore the vote of the people of Fermanagh South Throne. The people of Fermanagh South Throne, Bobby Sands got more votes than Margaret Thatcher did in her constituency. So she ha he had a mandate. Yeah, he had a bigger mandate than she had. And so this claim by the British government that Republicans didn't have popular support was clearly shown to be false. Clearly shown, demonstrably shown to be false when Bobby got the, the vote that he got and, 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 and won the seat. And it was a national and international story all over the world. All over the world, the story traveled uh, about Bobby's victory. So there was an understandable expectation that Thatcher would make the changes that were necessary to introduce uh, and, and, and change the, 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 the special status that the prisoners were entitled to. And it could easily have done by simply changing the prison conditions that prevailed at the time. We didn't expect the British government to admit political status, but what we did expect them to do was implement the contents, if you like, the circumstances that allowed the prisoners to, to, to serve out their time with dignity and with recognition that they were a, they were a different category of prisoner to the ordinary decent criminal, as they, they, they used to like to describe the other prisoners. But very quickly, Thatcher ruled that out. Uh, and then I think it was just people continued then to, 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 to support uh, the prisoners um, on their hunger strike. And, and uh, as Bobby died and others, others followed him, then the situation became quite clear that, uh, that we were going to pay a heavy price and that the prisoners were going to pay a heavy price. So tell, talk to me about kind of the, um, the legacy of that election, the, the 81 elections and kind of what that leads to and, and kind of what you guys start building and kind of start moving. I mean, you, um, you have done, quite honestly, the unthinkable, uh, at least in, in conventional thought. And so um, you, it starts to kind of move things forward. Walk us through what the legacy of 81, uh, that particular election. Well, well, I think in terms of the, the year itself, it was impossible, to, 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 if you like, realize the significance of what you were experiencing as you experienced it. It wasn't possible because the circumstances didn't allow for time out, for, for reflective moments, because you were essentially trying to save Bobby's life. And when Bobby died, you shift the focus on the Francis Cues. When Francis died, you shift the focus on the Patsy O'Hara and Raymond McCreish and so on. And, you know, so there's no time to reflect. There's only time to be on the streets protesting or whatever. And one of my jobs was visiting the, the, the prisoners as they died on hunger strike. So that was very demanding, personally speaking, for me. But when that year was really not the, that wasn't just the year of the hunger strike. It was also the year of of, of the elections, if you like, you know, that, that was a big year for, for, for electoral interventions by the prisoners. So that year, Bobby, Bobby Sands got elected to Fermanagh South Tyrone. Kieran Doherty, also a hunger striker who died in hunger strike, was elected um, uh, in Kevin Monaghan. Paddy Agnew, uh, uh, who was on a political prisoner on protest, got elected in um, Louth. And Sinn Féin st uh, stood a whole series of other prisoner candidates uh, in the South. And interestingly enough, uh, that particular election in the South of Ireland, uh, where they lost the seats, the two seats, uh, and maybe lost more, but certainly lost two, it was the last time uh, that uh, a majority government um, took, had, had political power in Dublin. From that point onwards, 
No political party in Dublin, either Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael, had a majority to form a single party government. From that point onwards, it was coalition governments. And I do think that there's a, a connection between the mood of the electorate, the disappointment of the electorate in the South, and their refusal to back the, the, the respective parties, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, the way they did uh, before the hunger strike. Because I think people were genuinely um, annoyed and angry at the decision by, by, by the failure of the Irish government to do more for the political prisoners. So by the end of 1981, you have, you have as I said, Bobby elected, Kieran elected, and Paddy Agnew elected. But a by-election that's held for Fermanagh South Tyrone as well, um, Owen Caron, who is Bobby Sands' election agent, he's also elected on a bigger majority, by the way, than Bobby had in terms of uh, his election. So, and then in the middle of it, there was also um, an, another election which proved the point that was being made by these other elections that the Republicans had support for, elect for an electoral party. And in May of that year, 50 candidates, I think, somewhere around that stood on, on pro-prisoner, support prisoner candidates. And they were all elected to the local councils. And that was that was a, a, a right across the north, and some big figures like Jerry Fitt, who was leader of the SDLP at the time, he lost his council seat in in the north of the city, even though he was MP for West Belfast. Paddy Devlin, who was also a very senior figure in the SDLP, he got in on the twenty third count. So there was a huge shift away from the, the SDLP to this group of fifty. Uh, uh, councillors, and that was then the for me that was the basis upon which, when Sinn Fein then look, looking back on 1981, and I go to prison at the end, in early 1982, but Sinn Fein the party begins to realise there's a vote out there for Sinn Fein, and in 1982 I think it's the Jim Pryor election, Sinn Fein formally then enters into the electoral arena. And stood candidates for that convention, the Jim Pryor convention, I think it was called. And Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness both get elected. And that's really the beginning of Sinn Féin's electoral intervention and involvement in electoral politics and building a, a, a serious political party. And that comes out of 1981. It comes out of the sale that Bobby Sands uh, died in. When he was MP for Fermanagh South Row and 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 the H blocks of Long Cash, it came out of there. Um, that is a, a. I think there are a lot of people who know that Bobby was elected. I don't think a lot of people really know the story that goes into it, uh, which I, I can't thank you enough for sharing. I, I think that's a. It's a. Uh, it's an amazing, I always, I always use this line, but it'd be a great Martin Scorsese movie. Um, yeah. And then uh, really the impact that it has because it's the catalyst uh, that, that pushes everything forward and really starts to kind of make changes and whatnot. Um, so I, I definitely want to say thank you so much for taking the time to sit sure. down with us and, and to walk Pleasure. through. Uh, it, is, uh, it is absolutely fascinating. And I uh, would encourage anybody to, uh, to go out and learn more uh, kind of about it because the entire story of just the election not you know yeah. everything else but just the election part is just amazing it, at least mm -hmm. to me so that brings me to my my last question before i i let you go uh for the evening um if you were walking down the street and bumped into a, an american and somebody said you know hey listen I, i'd like to learn more about anything about any topic or you know whatever what book do you encourage them to read what uh you know is there an album or a podcast like what would you say i would recommend you would you know, you do this to learn more. What's your recommendation? Well, I think one of the best books, particularly about the, the, the hunger strike of 1981, uh, is a book by David Beresford called 10 Men Dead. And that is a powerful read. And it introduces you to uh, Irish republicanism, English colonialism, and the, uh, the struggle for Irish independence. And it's seen through the eyes of the, the prison protests and the hunger strike of 1981, the deaths of the hunger strikers, like Bobby Sands and others. Okay, uh, I like that. I like that uh, a lot. I, I appreciate that recommendation. Thank you, uh, Jay. 
Jim, I, I, had a, I mean, your life is absolutely just a joy to listen to and listen about. I, I can't thank, thank you. you for taking the time. Uh, and I can't Appreciate thank you that. for everything that you do and everything that you have done and you continue to do. Um, please stay safe. Uh, please, you know, you know, I'm glad you're getting your second vaccine. That's good. That's yeah. important. But, you know, just. Uh, Can I just take this opportunity also, if you don't mind, just I want to thank people in the U.S. for everything that they have done um, in terms of supporting Sinn Féin, supporting the Republican struggle, but also, you know, supporting the people of Ireland in so many different ways, in so many different ways from, 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 from the period of the famine forward. I mean, with peace in Ireland today, and it's down to the work that people have done uh, in the Irish diaspora and, 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 and Capitol Hill, both Democrats and Republicans. Bill Clinton uh, was, was incredible uh, in terms of the support that he gave uh, for the peace process. You know, um, The election of Joe Biden, the comments that Joe has been making about Ireland. I mean, there, there, there's such a powerful... Um, such a powerful support from, from North America for the, pe for the people of this country, all the people of this country, and, and, and particularly the Republican and nationalist people appreciate everything that, 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 that the US administration has done for the people of Ireland and people from a business background who bring, bring employment to our country as well. So there, we have a very special relationship and we especially appreciate and, and, and are grateful of the support that comes from, uh, from the US to Ireland. So thank you very much for anybody, for everybody who's listening to this. And I'd like to thank them personally for, for, for everything they've done for us over the years. Thank That's, you. <laughs> I can't tell you how I just, I literally was sitting here thinking, Jim Kimney is thanking, like, that's so awesome. Uh, that is so great. Uh, well, um, Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, Jim, I hope we get you back soon. I, I'd love to talk to you about a thousand other topics. Uh, Anytime at all. Oh, man. Well, careful careful what you agree to earlier. <laughs> uh, but with that, I will bid you all uh, a good day. Uh, Slam nice night, Jay. Come on, Robert.